Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. We're going to be doing the Cid, which uh, is over by the Bard Camp at Abneyag Lake. Uh, N here gives you the quest to do it. Uh, you initially start it with a storyline that starts with uh, the people at the Bard Camp. You start the quest with her, and uh, this quest I would recommend for uh, players above level 4k. Uh, so like 4,000 plus, uh, just so you have like a good number of skills at rank one, um, cause you're going to have to do some, some decent damage to get through parts of the mission, uh, especially during the, the storyline to, to obtain this. Uh, and anytime that you're doing the quest after, after that, all you have to do is talk to N. Uh, you'll see here that there are three different difficulties, uh, and three different types of the mission. Uh, curi curiosity is the most straightforward. The boss fight is very simple. Um, we're going to be doing sorrow, which is a little bit different, uh, and we're going to select beginner just just to show you guys around the mission. The the mission is exactly the same, uh, aside from like minor details that increase the difficulty, uh, like the number of dragons during the dragon fight, and a few of the other uh, things. During the start, we'll be You'll be plopped down in. If you open your map, you'll be able to see where you're supposed to go by the little blue square icons on the map. Usually it's easiest just to do the center one for the first bit. Uh, it's gonna spawn some, some puppies that unfortunately need to die. Uh, elves don't really shine here with their skill set as hide is disabled yeah you can't use this here uh and archery is just not that great for the second round there's going to be an open circle you have to get the monsters to die within the circle uh the best way that i can think of to do this is to use spinning slasher uh, which i don't have hot keyed there we go and you just want to get them all to go into the circle before they die Uh, in the next part here, we're going to be doing the, the fish spawns. There's two different ways you can approach this. Uh, you don't want to touch the fish, really. So uh, you can either use fireball, crash shot, uh, chain sweep, or kunai storm to clear out the middle. And then a second wave will spawn. Uh, and then you just need to kill the second, wa uh, second wave with the same abilities. Uh, the other way of handling this, which I'm going to try and do right now, is just clear out just the ones that you need to to hit the orb and then get out of there before taking any damage or touching any of the fish. There's three different spawns for that, uh, for these wa uh, waves of fish. And if you do the three waves of fish, it makes one of the later parts much easier rather than doing the orbs where you actually have to fight the enemies. So for this one, I'm just going to use Crash Shot, and you can see how the second wave spawns. Peepees over there. Doing the uh, the third one that needs to be done, I believe. So as you can see, all of them are dead now. I'm going to go touch the orb. And now there's just the one, the one left. And it's every other one. So if you look at the map, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven orbs. Uh, every other one has the fish spawns on it. And there's the last one done. Then you just want to go to the center one here. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. You just kill the enemies. And uh, when, when they all die, you move on to the next bit. All right. So now we're on to the next part. Uh, so the best way that I've found to do this bit right here is using Dance of Death. 
Uh, mine's pretty low level, so it's not going to be super effective. But it does a uh, flat damage amount to the fish. If you don't have Dance of Death, or if it's on cooldown, maybe it wasn't enough to kill them, uh, you're going to want to use weapons with piercing. So either crossbows or lances will work. Uh, those are those are typically the best solution to this. Um, you can also just slowly whittle them down with normal attacks. It's just much harder that way, because they barely take damage at all. You want to have a CC Fire Wand uh, for the next bit. And I've got mine right here. Uh. Alright, so once this this wave ends, it's going to spawn some dragons. Uh, best way to kill the dragons is with fire wands. Uh, when there's one dragon, or when there's two dragons left, you want to be careful. Because they will... They will try to revive each other. So you either want to make sure you have the DPS to kill them uh, fast enough. Which in this case I think will be fine. Ooh. As you can see, it started to try to revive the other dragon. <laughs> That's a good tip. That is definitely a good tip. Uh, another tip is you can use uh, fire enchant on your on your gear. Uh, I, most of my gear all has fire enchants on it, uh, and that will prevent some fire damage from getting through. Some, not all. After this, you go to the middle section, and again, it's the same thing as the fish. Uh, if you don't do all three fish sections earlier on, and instead choose to fight, you will ha this will not be fish. If they touch you, they prevent you from using abilities, they'll prevent you from summoning pets, and de-summon the pets you already have out. Uh, they'll slow your movement speed. Like, there's all sorts of negative effects they can have, depending on which one you touch. Usually what I'll do here uh, at this point in the mission is I'll pause right before we get to the circle, make sure the party's all ready. Uh, some parties can speed run this, and they won't even wait for you. They'll just go ahead and start the boss fight. Uh, but what I like to do here is just make sure that I have Battlefield Overture going uh, before we actually go into to start the fight. I'm going to skip the cutscene here. Uh, there are AIs for pets available uh, that you can find that will cause them to run in circles. Uh, and if you have Divine Link, the, your pet will take the aggro from the boss. Uh, I don't have any of those set up. But I can use Divine Link to force her to aggro my pet. Or at least try. And then uh, DPS is usually the best thing to do here, is just do as much damage in the shortest amount of time as possible. Uh, chains are really good for this. Uh, any weapon that has 
any amount of uh, injury rate on it is really good here because once the boss gets to a lower HP total, uh, she will have an insane regen rate. So it's going to be really hard to actually damage her unless you have enough damage to overcome it. Uh, the best way to do that is with uh, cross crossbow, bows, uh, chains, guns, uh, and shuriken. And then uh, the end chest will always have an echo stone in it. It'll always have stimulant in it, depending on the grade of the mission that you went in on. And then uh, sometimes it'll also have uh, an advanced difficulty and an intermediate difficulty. There's chances to get different enchants uh, and some other uh, different items. Like there's a uh, crafting material you can get to make uh, a shield in, I believe, intermediate. Uh, and then you'll go to the end here. Uh, it looks a little different depending on which uh, mission you select between Sorrow, Fear, and Curiosity. Uh, in Curiosity, it's just a pond of water with a little spire sticking out like this, but it's underwater. And then, uh, uh, obviously, in Sorrow, it looks like this. You're, you'll be presented with three different options. You can fragment, uh, which is to take an Echo Stone and turn it into more stimulant, uh, which can be used to awaken, uh, which you can awaken your, your echo stones. Uh, I do want to reroll this one, so we'll, we'll give it a shot. I probably won't get anything great because we're just using regular echo stone awakening, uh, but it does cost AP, uh, so just to be aware of that, and the cost, the AP cost does go up. So it costs two for the first try, it'll cost three for the second try. Uh, which I don't necessarily need. Wild, taming wild animals range? It just sounds silly, so I'll go ahead and reroll that again. Cooking effect duration, sure. We'll leave that for now. Uh, when you go in to do the next mission, um, so if you do this a second time over, the cost resets to, uh, back down to two. Um, so it's good to kind of save it and just do it once per run. Uh, and then finally, you also get uh, the opportunity to advance. Uh, depending on the difficulty of the mission, you'll see uh, a, a different stat modifier here next to the su success rate. And depending on the grade of your uh, Echo Stone, it'll have a uh, lower and lower chance of success the higher the grade is. Uh, once your Echo Stone gets to grade 25, from that point forward, it can decrease the grade when you try to upgrade it. Uh, and because you only get three chances per run, uh, as you can see, the chance is lower on the higher grade Hecko Stone. Um, you only get three chances per run. Uh, you will have to do this mission over and over again to, to get it to a higher grade. As you can see, it's not great. And I just failed three times. <laughs> fun stuff, fun stuff. see did I miss anything uh, th there are five different types of echo stones uh, color-coded uh, black is for HP MP and stamina white is for will yellow is for dexterity red is for strength and blue is for intelligence so depending on what stats you enjoy using the most or or what you're looking for it can definitely be helpful for for you to get the echo stones uh, even early on, even at the lower levels, if you can get somebody to, to walk you through this mission uh, once you complete the storyline, uh, so like 4,000, 4, 5,000, around that level range, uh, just having them is a good stat boost to have. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I think I, I've covered basically everything about this mission that you need to know. Hopefully it helps you, out, you guys out, uh, and you can use some of these tricks to uh, clear your runs of... Uh, uh, she finaha, which is apparently the uh, correct pronunciation. Have a good one. <laughs>